Man, it's certainly been the past couple of days because yesterday I told y'all my son, he was in here messing with the microphone uh, and then he ended up turning it off. So I did like 40 minutes worth of work and all for nothing. But then today we went and doubled down just running a blank mission in here because I came in here, we recorded this video, everything we getting ready to talk about. And I didn't even realize that earlier I had accidentally unplugged the cord from the microphone. So it was all on mute. But we here. But anyway, real quick on a serious note before we get into everything, um, I, I appreciate y'all in the comment section. I've been seeing a lot of y'all just giving us well wishes and stuff, making sure we straight uh, with this Hurricane Milton on the way. Uh, we are good. We are not right directly in the path of it, but we still, it's supposed to be a really big hurricane. We still, still supposed to get like the outskirts of it and whatnot. So that can still be a, a big impact um, on South Florida. So we'll see. We'll see. Uh, we're not like worrying about nothing right now. We're not like scared anything like that but you, you never know how these things are gonna go i think we should be straight um now as far as videos and stuff i think we should be straight i, I think we should be good but in the case that we aren't so if you don't see a video tomorrow or you don't see a video the next day uh then that would mean that we ain't got no power something like that but i think we should be straight but we'll see but i i just want to say i appreciate y'all for those of y'all that are in directly in the path uh in a part of florida that's supposed to get it a lot worse than we are down here in miami um hopefully y'all whether you had to evacuate or you just safe and just you're good hopefully all y'all are good um so we'll just see how this thing goes but i really appreciate y'all looking out um i appreciate y'all just i appreciate y'all because y'all are family so thank you for that i love y'all now somebody who is not gonna looking like it's not gonna be family uh is Devonte adams um we've been reporting on everything going on with the baltimore ravens and their interest in Devonte adams and i do think that it was very very real ravens were the favorites to land Devonte adams they were listed as front runners to land Devonte adams Devonte adams he spoke on it back in january 20th that he would be willing to give up all the yards and stuff in order to join a team where he could truly compete for a super bowl um but with this latest report, uh, this will let us know like that it's not happening for one main reason, and it's probably not the one that you're thinking of when we read it. So, uh, Tashawn Reed, who has been covering the Raiders for a very, very long time. He covers them for The Athletic. He does a phenomenal job. This is what he said today. He said, the teams that are still in on Devontae Adams are the Jets, the Saints, the Steelers, and the Bills. So, okay but these are the teams that are out on Devonte adams are the chiefs the cowboys the commanders and the baltimore ravens now look now we've talked about when somebody said that the ravens are not interested in Devonte adams before because uh peter schrager said that um and he's on good morning football uh so he he said that he said the ravens are certainly they're not interested in Devonte adams and when i saw that mm, that, that ain't phased me none I'm like, we hear stuff like that all the time, but that don't mean they're not really interested. But then what got me with this report right here is that Jeff Zrebic, who is the Ravens reporter, the Ravens beat writer, he retweeted it. And when he retweeted that, I said, oh, OK, it's over because Jeff, when it comes to speculation with stuff, Jeff doesn't he doesn't mess with that. He doesn't mess with reporting on stuff like that. If it's rumors, anything like that. Nope. Jeff just reports exactly what happens. One thing that he will do um, if it's after the fact, like with a Derrick Henry last year, because Titans and Ravens, they had the agreement in place and then the Titans backed out at the last second. He'll report on stuff like that if he's asked about it way after the fact. But in the moment, he only reports on exactly what happens. So when Jeff Zrebic reported that, because he ain't said nothing about Devontae Adams and he, somebody even asked him, too. They like, Jeff, well, what's going on with Devontae Adams? You think he's going to come to the Ravens? And he was like, no, nah, I, I ain't messing with that. He said, I, I'll let y'all try to figure that out. Try to figure out all the signs and all that. And he said he, he tried not to get consumed uh, with that. So shout out to Jeff Zrebic. Um, But Jeff Zrebic, when he retweeted that, it um that that hurt me because that lets us know that it's uh, over. I mean, hopefully there could be one less. Uh, it's, yeah, so that, that, that that's a wrap on Devontae Adams. I, I appreciate everybody that's been here every step of the way for every single video, every single report, every single new item of information that came out on the potential and possibility of the Ravens and Devontae Adams, but it's looking like it's officially a wrap now. Today, the Baltimore Ravens had their first day of practice and Marlon Humphrey was not a participant. Now, I was hoping, and we talked about this before, I was hoping to come on here because I wasn't expect 
than Marlon Humphrey to practice this week. I, I don't expect him to play this week, maybe even next week. He was in a walking boot after the game. It's never a good look. Uh, but I was hoping to come on here and be wrong and be like, oh, Marlon Humphrey actually practiced today. Oh, he, he's playing this week. Oh, okay, he's straight. But so far, no good. Now, Harbaugh did say, like, look, Harbaugh said it, that with the people that were missing in practice this week, it's just – Post-game type of things, just little knickknacks and patty wax after the game and whatnot. Okay, Hobbs. Well, I mean, a walking boot ain't just any after-game type of thing. But we're going to see. We're going to see. So let's give it this week and whatnot. I mean, we got no choice but to wait and see. Um, but also, along with Marlon Humphrey not practicing, uh, Rashad Bateman, uh, he didn't practice. And I guess they let me. Rashad was like, man, this is the first game where I was involved this much. I'm tired. I need a little break. But Rashad Bateman ain't practiced. Ronnie Stanley, Malik Harrison, and Broderick Washington. Now, all those guys, they all finished the game. So I know that it wasn't, couldn't be anything too serious. Now, it was a long game. So the game like that, that'll take some extra work up out of you, man. And Ronnie Stanley, like, he's usually missed practices. He usually missed some games. But Ronnie Stanley been out there. He been out there full time. He been playing full time. He been practicing full time. So Ronnie Stanley probably like, oh man, this is how y'all do it. Are y'all for full time players? But um, nah, I'm playing though. But uh, shout out to them for just doing their thing and finishing the job last Sunday against the Bengals. But hopefully, all those guys, including Marlon Humphrey, can come back very very soon. Speaking of players that didn't practice, especially in the secondary for the Baltimore Ravens, Arthur Millette. He did not practice either. Now with Arthur Millette. Uh, Jeff Zerbeck did say that he tweaked his hamstring So he's been dealing with that And we know with hamstrings They can be very, very tricky It could be a couple of days thing It could be a couple of weeks thing But see with Arthur Millett Timing is of the essence Because while we don't want him to rush back Like he gotta get back pretty soon Because uh, Arthur Millett actually has Until the end of next week To be added to the active roster so they designated him to return from injury reserve. So that part is out the way. But when you get designated to return from IR, you have a three-week window. So he's right in the middle because he got to the end of next week. So he got this week and next week. And if he ain't added to the active roster by next week, then yikes. So we know the Baltimore Ravens defense has been struggling big time this season. Um, and there have been some games that have been much better than others, like obviously that Bills game. But we have seen just a lot of miscommunication. We've seen some bad matchups. And we feel like Zach Orr doesn't have the complete feel for his personnel yet. Now, we know he's a brand new defensive coordinator. It's his first time being a defensive coordinator. So we knew this was, there was going to be a learning period and a growth period. But um, Zach Orr. Big shout out to him because he is bringing on former Baltimore Ravens defensive coordinator, Dean Pease. Let's read the report from Jeff Zerbeck. He said, just spoke to Ravens defensive coordinator Zach Orr, who said he's bringing on longtime NFL assistant and defensive coordinator Dean Pease in for a senior advisor role. He's a guy who knows me as a person, knows the system, knows the culture here. Uh, he's a Raven, and Pease will start this week. And there have been videos and pictures of Dean Pease already there in his Ravens hoodie and all. He just had to go. He had to go grab it out the closet because I think he had to move his Falcons hoodie out the way, throw away that Titans one, and grab the Ravens one from way in the back of the closet. But he is back in the building. Uh, Jeff Zerbeck said, Pease, who's 75 years old, was the Ravens defensive coordinator from 2012 to 2017. That's a long time. Uh, he said he coached uh, Zach Orr and has been a mentor to him. Uh, they talked about Pease coming aboard this summer, but decided the time was right now. Pease will be on the practice field and in defensive meetings, and he certainly was. Now, see, that's what I was talking about with Jeff Zerbeck. He, when it's stuff that maybe almost happened, maybe something that the Ravens were considering, he won't report on it right then. And, well, for a lot of stuff, he won't report on it right then and there. But because I, I don't remember hearing about Dean Pease being in contact with the Ravens or Zach or at all this summer. I, I don't think we heard about that at all. But Jeff Zrebik said he, he brought it up because now it's actually happening. Since he said they talked about Pease coming aboard this summer. He also said uh, on Zach Orr, Zach Orr said, I stayed in contact with Dean throughout the season. And I said, hey, it would be good if you wanted to come up here and be an advisor, be another set of eyes just to be a help to us. Ultimately, all I care about is us performing the best we can to help us win. And he also said, if you, if you get a guy I'm real close with and a guy who knows the culture and is a great football mind and he's down for it, to me, it's a no brainer. So with Zach Orr, I love that because um that takes a lot of humility from somebody for somebody who's in a position of power to be like you know what i need help i i, I need some assistance I, I i need to find a way where i can do a much better job than what i'm doing shout out to zach or for that because a lot of people wouldn't do that a whole lot of people and whatever but they would not do that um so that's big on him now i know when robert Sala got fired from the jets yesterday a lot of ravens fans were like oh we should bring robert Sala in he could come help our defense, and he possibly could have. But Jeff Zerbeck did say 
that he heard that uh, it's been reported that Robert Sala uh, said that he was going to take the rest of this year off and then look for something next season. And, I mean, if you're getting paid for the rest of this year and you're already getting paid for next season from the Jets too, oh, yeah, enjoy your time, spend time with your family, chill out. Just You get you get an extra chance to assess everything. That, now, when a lot of us get fired from our normal jobs in the regular world, then it ain't, it ain't like that. But um, he got a very, very nice severance package from the Jets to where he can be off for a year and a half. Wow, what a – anyway, um, so Robert Sala is out of the question – um, so, but yeah, I, I, I like it. I know a lot of people are iffy about it with Dean Pease coming back. I know Dean Pease, Mr. Prevent Defense, Mr. Fourth Quarter Defense, where um, he, he had a little rough time closing. But um, I, I do like this idea because, like for me, it reminds me of uh, when we feature your questions in the videos because I'll be thinking one way about the Baltimore Ravens. I'll be like, this is, this is A because of this. This is B because of this. But then... When we have y'all questions, when y'all send in the questions, then y'all bring out a whole different perspective, a whole different point of view. And y'all be like, oh, well, actually, we think that this is B because of this and this is E because of this. And it's like, oh, I wasn't even thinking about that. So the things, the same thing could happen with Zach or to where he may be looking at it one way and he may be seeing, oh, this is X, Y, Z. But Dean Pease could look at it another way and be like, oh, this is actually A, B, C. So I, I like the higher. And, and let's let's see. Let's see what could happen. Let's see what could happen. So we got a pass rush. The pass rush could use some fine tuning. It's really the secondary. In my opinion, it's, it's, it's the secondary that needs the most work. And I think a big part of it is communication because that's, in my opinion, where they've been struggling the most. Now in some even brighter news for the Baltimore Ravens, Lamar Jackson, who has been just amazing per usual. Uh, he got recognized for exactly how amazing he was because Lamar Jackson won the AFC Offensive Player of the Week award. But with this award, this is not the first time that he won it. It's not the second time. It's not the third, fourth, fifth. It is the 11th time that Lamar Jackson has won this award. That's a lot. That's a whole lot. And when you think about it, because you know how um, the voters or the people that give out the awards, they can sort of have a recency bias in a good or a bad way, depending on how you look at it. But we know there's been other times where Lamar could have won that award again. But they probably be like, ah, you know what? No, nah, Lamar just won it the other week, so we, we can't give it to him again, can we? No, nah, we, we can't do that. So um, the times where he won it before, 2019, he won it five times. <laughs> He's just amazing, man. Um, 2020, he won it twice. 2021, he won it once. 2023, he won it twice. And then in 2024, thus far, he's won the award one time. Will there be more? I could see it happening. Ooh, man, this could be so, so good. Somebody that we've been missing, as y'all know, is Keaton Mitchell. And with Keaton Mitchell, uh, we predicted that he would be back within the two weeks after the Bengals game. So whether it be this week or next week, and he is he's getting closer. He's getting closer. And the, the way that I determined that is not by anything special or anything like that, but just how Harbaugh was talking about him the last time that he spoke about Keaton Mitchell uh, being closer to returning. But today, um, he was not practicing, but Keaton Mitchell was working off to the side during the media viewing at practice. So he's getting there. He's getting closer. He ain't there yet. But when you start working off to the side on the sideline at Ravens practice, then that means you are so close so now we reach the favorite part of these videos for me where we get to feature your questions and let's hear from some of our team keep it clean patrons but before we do we got to give a special shout out to the newest team keep it clean patron our guy Devin. So, Devin, appreciate you becoming a Team Keep It Clean patron. If any of y'all would like to become one, you can go to patreon.com slash engravenviz. But Devin, he ain't stopped there. He ain't just was like, oh, I'm going to become a patron. I'm going to chill. No, he decided to send in a question as well. So, let's hear what he had to say. He said, if, oh, this is sad. He said, if the Devontae Adam trade goes down with us, do you think he would make an immediate impact? Well, I guess I got to rephrase his question then. Do you think he would have made an immediate impact? Yeah, he definitely would have. Uh, and how soon do you think he would play with the hamstring injury now? Well, I guess I got to change that to how soon would he have played with the hamstring injury? That that ain't no real injury. That's just, they just using that so he doesn't play and doesn't really get hurt. And then they got to keep him and then they got to pay him. They, they, they trying to get this thing moved along. So once he finds his new team, then that hamstring injury, it'll disappear. Watch. Uh, he said, hope you know your family stay safe during a hurricane this week. Hey, I appreciate that a lot. He said, side note, I just had my firstborn September 24th. Oh, congratulations, man. Uh, and she's been in her Ravens gear for every game so far. Got to start them young. Yeah, you got to teach them the right way, man. So I'm glad you're showing her the ropes and showing her that, hey, 
She got to be a Ravens baby. Expression also came from a team keeping clean patron, my guy Brian. He said, Yo, ain't Raven last year, my group chat called out Marcus Williams, busted plays every week. This year, he is an absolute liar. Ability. We got to move on at the trade deadline. Oh my goodness. You, oh, you ready to get rid of Marcus Williams? Woo. Um, I don't think it's that simple. I mean, anything possible, but Marcus Williams ain't going nowhere. Uh, but he also said, why not give Audarius Washington a start? He has looked wonderful every time he gets in. Now, that is true, but he's also been a slot cornerback. So, much different assignments, much different roles than a drop back safety. Not saying that he couldn't do it, but he's had a much different responsibility thus far. And depending on what happens with Marlon Humphrey, what are you going to do at the cornerback position? Would you rather him continue to play a lot more slot corner if Marlon Humphrey is going to be out? Or would you rather have him dropping back? You got some other options, too, as far as people who could drop back. But bottom line, Marcus Williams ain't getting out of the starting lineup. Like, they showed us that last year, in my opinion. And, I mean, he's getting paid big money. He, getting paid, he ain't getting paid big money to sit on the bench. Uh, Marcus Williams is getting paid a lot of money to go catch some picks uh, and stop the wide receivers from catching the ball. Now, you've been missing some opportunities to do that now. But um, hopefully it could be like a Justin Tucker thing where, hey, he struggled early on in the season, then they fine-tune some stuff here and there, and then boom, he's back. Uh, he also said, Brandon Stevens is living proof that the Ravens can develop DBs into starters. Well, Brandon Stevens, he's he, he been struggling. But anyway, um, also, I don't think I missed – he said, don't think I missed that Hobbs timeout before halftime this week. Hey, my, my guy, I like this though Because he said, Ravens, I'm on your heads Regardless if y'all want or not He said, I ain't missing nothing So shout out to my guy, Brian He said, but I won't be the dead horse Marcus Williams will be a solid capital on Oh, this is sad He said, Marcus Williams will be solid capital on a Devontae Adams trade And like the flag in the ref's pocket In a one-score Chiefs game I'm out, I like that But you know what's crazy? About the Chiefs I was expecting when they played the Saints I'm like, oh man, here we go It's you know, Chiefs been getting, they've they, they been okie dokie teams all, all year so far when it comes to the refs and stuff. But the refs ain't even had to interfere because the Saints were just that bad. Next question also came from the team Keep It Clean Patriot, my guy Keontae. He said, we called it, but it wasn't Salah. I believe oil will be great. I really do, but I knew we needed help uh, to help him a little bit because playing a game on the field and then as a coach is much different. You have to learn how to adjust to get into a big scheme going rather than just doing your job. That's a good point. Uh, he said, I think peace will help all reach a level that we need. Okay, hey, well, that's what we're hoping for. That's what we're hoping for, that we just see a lot of improvement. Because it's, it's, to me, it's just about fine-tuning some things. Because there's been a miscommunication here, a breakdown in defense here, but in, in the middle of the field. You know, but, yeah, it's just some fine-tuning some things. But he said, small question I have is, do you think practicing versus Lamar kills Jaden Daniels' threat? Uh, we all know Lamar is the best dual threat in the league. And to me, Jaden Daniels looks like his little brother. But... I think our defense is ready for that because of eight being our quarterback. What are your thoughts? That's a really, really good question. Because uh, a lot of times you hear about teams when they're getting ready to face Lamar Jackson, they'll say, oh, this quarterback tried to simulate a Lamar Jackson in practice for us. And it's like, mm, but could he really do it? Can anybody really do that? Uh, but for the Ravens defense, they go against Lamar Jackson every single day. Now, Jaden Daniels is different from Lamar Jackson. Um, but I, I really do think, I really do believe because we've seen it so many times and y'all let me know if y'all remember this from previous times with the Baltimore Ravens. There will be something that the Baltimore Ravens are just struggling with, struggling with. They're doing all kinds of bad. So our expectations for whatever that area is that they're struggling with will drop way, way low. And just when we expect them to do so bad, just when we're like, oh, man, this is going to be so terrible, a terrible outing from the Ravens in this area of the team, then they go and show out. They go do something crazy, like crazy good. So I could see that happening in this game for the defense because everybody's like, oh, man, the pass defense is bad. The pass defense is terrible. I mean, it has been pretty bad. But everybody's expecting, like, the pass defense to continue to do that. So I could see this game, uh, the pass defense just really playing lockdown out of nowhere, especially if Marlon Humphrey's out. Uh, I could see even more reason why a lot of people would be like, oh, man, this pass defense, oh, they're getting ready to be rough today against Jaden Daniels and them, but I could really see them showing out this week. Next question came from another team, Keep It Clean patron, my guy Martin. He said that game was truly special and one of those I'll always remember. This is a top 10 Ravens game for me, maybe even top five. Uh, I need to put them in order, but it was a great game. I'm still pumped from that game. Days later, there's so much to say, but I wanted to give a huge shout out to Pat Ricard. I went back and watched that botch snap a couple of times. Oof, that, yeah, that was rough. And it was looking like, well, there was two of them. One of them was touchdown. One of 
of them was turnover. That second one that was a turnover, it was looking like that was about to be all rap. But anyway, he said he went and watched the botch snap a couple of times because I wanted to give credit to the player that made the game-saving tackle on the fumble recovery because it was a Bengals, a bunch of Bengals around the ball. Uh, when it was picked up, Ricard was five yards deep into his route because he went out for a pass. He came all the way back to the ball and cut the defender off. Him and Rosengarten made the tackle, but if Ricard wasn't there, the defender would have had even more field to get away from Rosengarten and possibly score the touchdown. Yeah, amazing play by Pat Ricard. Amazing play and, and, and effort. Effort is something that you could teach it, but it's something that people just got to get on their own. Because you could be teaching somebody all the right stuff in the world, but if they don't got effort, then all of that teaching that you're teaching them is going to go to waste. Effort is something that got to be developed from within because you got to really be wanting to go get it ready to go make whatever happen in whatever situation. So huge shout out to Pat Ricard. I appreciate you bringing this up because it's something that we didn't talk about. Uh, at all um so I, I appreciate this a lot because pat ricard needs a, the hugest shout out in the world for that um because he didn't give up on the play uh and that yeah that changed everything obviously um he said uh i wanted to point that out because normally a botch snap like that there would be no one but the qb to stop the defender after the recovered uh football uh, football is a game of inches and ricard and rosengard made that tackle enough to where it wasn't a chip shot field goal i love our team lamar superman but even superman needs help from others sometimes and ricard and rosengard were there to make the game saving tackle because he picked that ball up and was on his way to the end zone yeah it, yeah he really was uh, he said also I know the defense got cooked but uh, almost all game, but I will say I believe the Bengals' last three possessions went interception, three and out, and then stopped them for just enough yards to miss the field goal. They did the opposite of what they normally do, uh, where they go from giving up nothing giving up er to giving up everything. And in this game, they gave up everything. Then the last three possessions, they locked it down. <laughs> yeah, you're right, man. Uh, and then he said, prayers for you and the family during Hurricane Milton. Hey, I appreciate that a lot, Martin. Thank you, man. Next question came from another team. Keep it clean. Patron, my guy, Derek. He said, hey, Raven, how are you, man? We doing pretty good. He said, I'm going to jump right into it. I'm, I hope I'm right, but I think Devontae Adams will be a pretty good fit here. Why? Oh, man. Well, let's keep reading, though. He said, well, he's a great player, but he will not be a Florida Raven, but a West Coast Raven. Uh, sure, Florida has the GOAT Ray Lewis and our baby GOAT Lamar Jackson, but what about Ravens players from out West? Chris McAllister, Marcus Peters, Marcus Williams, Jimmy Smith, Terrell Suggs, Todd Heap, Mark Andrews, all from California and Arizona. And where is Devontae Adams from? You guessed it, California. I don't know, man. Florida Ravens are fantastic, but them West Coast Ravens bring that grit as well. Yeah, and I just realized, you, especially these Arizona names, Mark Andrews, Terrell Suggs, Ty Heave. I said, yeah, okay. And then the West Coast, Chris McAllister. Yeah, oh, yeah, you want to go. Marcus Peters. Yeah, Jimmy Smith. Yeah, you put Marcus Williams on his list. Uh, hey, I, I appreciate you putting Marcus Williams on his list. Despite, because, you know, Ravens fans, they ain't really feeling Marcus Williams right now. But we know Marcus Williams about to get it turned around so he can go right on this list with the rest of them. Next question came from my guy, Sebastian. He said, what a great game on Sunday. I don't know what Lamar did in halftime because he was so sus in the first half. He was overthrowing people, hesitating on open lanes, and he couldn't read the pressure. But once the second half started, he was MVP once again. Shout out to Lamar. And he said, what's up with all these Devontae Adams rumors anyway? I've been a Ravens fan since I was eight and I'm 23 now. I know we've been wide receiver deprived since we existed, but the Ravens are not trading for Tay. He sent this yesterday, by the way. So he must have known something. Yeah, I mean, he, he knows how the Ravens operate. And them getting an elite wide receiver who can still play, who, who ain't way past their front, then he, I mean... Anyway, uh, he said, I have more faith in them trading for another pass rusher like Hassan Reddick. You never know. You never know. And then he said, P.S. likely is really uh, Lamar Jackson's Anquan Bolden. Mm -hmm, yeah, I guess so. Somebody who you really trust in all situations. You will throw it up to them even if they cover it and you expect them to go get up and get it. Yeah, I can see that. Man, just imagine if we did have that elite big body wide receiver. Like, oh. And just add that to what we are Anyway uh, He said also P.S. I still can't get over the fact That someone tackled Henry Styles And got concussed Yeah that was crazy That was rough man Like How do you tackle Derrick Henry What do you do What do you do it's, it, He's a cheat code uh, He said also P.S. Ain't it amazing how there's still No fumbles on the mesh point Of RPOs between Henry and Lamar Unlike last year That's a really good point I never, I never think about that Because last year I know him and Justice Hill They got, they got off to a slow start um, him and Gus L was it was a little rocky just a couple of times, but um, overall like it, it got on point eventually. But with Derrick Henry, like he brand new to this team, he ain't never played with Lamar Jackson before except in a Pro Bowl, I think. But um, he never played with Lamar Jackson before in, in in a regular season action, no real game. So the way that they've been that that this thing been going has been smooth. So 
that's something that's really, really good. Next question came from my guy, Javo. He said, listen to the vault, and do you think we might have another OOC next year if Munkin goes to the Jets? Uh, does T. Martin get the nod for offensive coordinator? That's a really, really good question because, yeah, it was reported that, um, I think by Jeremy Fowler a couple days ago, that, well, not a couple days ago, yesterday, because Robert Sala got fired yesterday, but that Todd Munkin could be a possible replacement for Robert Sala as head coach for the Jets. Um, and if he was to leave, yeah, I could see them hiring from within. Uh, it all just depends. But Todd Munkin, he was a outside hire. So I was a bit shocked about that one. I really thought that they were going to promote from within. Um, but I am glad that they just went in a different direction. Um, they really got an outside guy. Um, because it, I was afraid if they would have promoted from within, then it could have been a lot of the same old, same old. Um, but with um, with T. Martin, obviously they got a lot of respect for him. Um, they got a lot of love for him. So I could see him uh, definitely getting a shot to win that job as offensive coordinator if Todd Munkin was to leave. How we go four and two. Next question came from my guy, Josh B. He said, what's up, Engraving the team? Keep it clean. Hope all is well and everyone in their families are doing good mentally and physically. Appreciate that. He said, what a game Sunday. So anxious and fun to watch. Last week, I sent a message on how we will go three and two, uh, although the Ravens defense didn't do anything I was talking about, uh, which was blanket chase and make Joe throw check downs. Lamar, excuse me, and the offense came up so big and proved all the haters wrong that said this team or Lamar cannot win from behind or in a shootout. That's true. He said, but a win is a win in the NFL, and we got to keep stacking the rest of the season. JT is back. I doubted him a little bit, but at the same time, JT has won so many games in the past and got us to the Super Bowl in 2012. Oh, yeah, I was doubting him a lot because I was very, very worried and concerned about Justin Tucker. But after that 53-yard Mayfield goal in the wind where the ball hooked not once but twice, yeah, it, it looks like he's back for sure, and I'm glad he, they just sent him right out there for the game-winning kick. Uh, just to end it, they said we ain't gonna mess around with no runs. We don't want them to try to force no fumbles because Derrick Henry he fumbled at the goal line last week. We, they said we ain't taking no risk. JT, get on out there and win it. If we fumble the snap or some, all right, we got three more downs to run it. So that was a smart decision by the Ravens because initially when it was live, I'm like, what are they doing? Why are they not just? But I didn't think about all this stuff until literally just now while recording this. Anyway, continuing, he said I was letting them slide a little bit, but in my past emails, it might have sounded like I was hating on Josh Allen and Joe Burrow, but I wasn't trying to. It was just the media and both their fan bases getting to me. LOL. I think they are both top four quarterbacks and play amazing, but I just believe Lamar Jackson is better. I agree. I agree. Same thing we've been saying because those guys, and it's not no fault of their own, but their teams have provided them with elite wide receivers. Ravens have done that with Lamar Jackson. But anyway, he said, um, both those QBs are amazing, uh, and I want to give praise to Joe Burrow because he played so good in that game up until the pick to Marlon Humphrey. And if other people had their doubts about Joe Burrow, you see why he's a top four QB now. Uh, this week's game is going to be fun and one I expect the Ravens to win, but it's not going to be easy. Oh, no. Uh, Washington is playing really good right now, but they are beatable. What they're doing right now is running the ball well with both running backs and their quarterback and Jaden Daniels is playing unbelievable ball right now and isn't really making any mistakes. That's true. That's true. And he's not even being like... He's obviously careful with the ball, but he's not scary with the ball. It's not like, all right, I'm only going to take check down. No, he's taking them shots too, but he takes calculated shots. Very good. Uh, he said, for us to win a game, I think what the defense has to do is stop or contain run the running game and wrap up number eight uh, because if not, he will run you flat over and, and also contain five with his legs. Make him throw short passes and tackle. Uh, watch for the deep ball because his deep balls are really accurate. Wait a minute. And he can hit them in stride. Uh, with Marlon possibly out for this game, Brandon Stevens needs to pick it up and play better and get his head turned around quicker because he's our weakest corner right now and people are picking on him yeah well brandon stevens that's that's been it because again he don't get burnt he don't be out of position to make a play he just be getting beat at the at the point of uh the uh oh my goodness i cannot think of it with the point where they where the, the receiver got to catch the ball uh i cannot think of what it's called right now my brain just whoosh. anyway you know what i'm talking about um, but yeah, he's he just like Anthony Averett to me. He just remind me of Anthony Averett. Never get burned, never getting beat like crazy, but just struggling to make a play on the ball. Uh, he also said 32 and 39. So he talking about Marcus Williams and Eddie Jackson. I uh, have also been playing bad football and it looks like they're not communicating well. They need to step it up or get Bo Braid to play. Hopefully Arthur Millette comes back. But if not, me personally, I want to see a little bit of TJ Tampa out there. Oh, that would be something. You you might get your wish this week. If Marlon Humphrey is out, Arthur Millette still ain't back yet. We're going to see, man. He said, for the offense, Washington's weakness is a secondary, but I'm not saying come out and start throwing a bunch, but throw it precisely and well. Their corners uh, group are one of the weakest groups in the league, but our offense have to keep it going with the run. My question to you is, what do you think we need to do to win this game? Thanks for reading this long email, LOL. Hope you have a great week. Appreciate that, Josh. Well, yeah, that, that was a long email, but it's all good, man. Um, to win this game, Ravens got to come out and just play their game. 
Um, look for weaknesses with the Washington Commanders, um, but continue to play to your strengths. Uh, obviously, it starts first and foremost with um, Derrick Henry, uh, that strong running game that has been keep feeding Derrick Henry, give him opportunities. Now, do, continue doing your toss plays, your pitch plays uh, to where he can get the, his hand on the ball early in the play and then just take off. Uh, as far as the offensive line, offensive line got to be really, really good. They got, they got to be really, really good. Protect Lamar Jackson better than you, better than you did last week. Because while he only got sacked once, he could have been sacked a lot more times. And if it was any other quarterback besides Lamar Jackson back there, then he probably does get sacked a lot more times. Um, but really just the, the safety play, too. Safety play on the back end, it's got to be a whole lot better, especially against Jaden Daniels because he is going to take his shots. And Eddie Jackson, Marcus Williams, they need to be much more prepared. So that's on really the defense as a whole to be more prepared for Jaden Daniels. Next question came from my guy Aaron. He said, hey man, hope the boys are doing well. I understand what fans say about the defense. I'm keeping it calm because of the interception from Beta Marlowe. He said he's keeping that same nickname for him. Oh, yikes. And he said also, and although he walked with a boot after the game, he'll be fine. Hey, are you John Harbaugh's burner email? But anyway, he said uh, Alpha Lamar Jackson consumed 403 yards. That's 77.5% of the total offense also he said another record as usual this is the second career game with 300 plus passing yards 50 plus rushing yards and four uh plus touch or four touchdown passes and zero interceptions which is the most in nfl history per cbs sports oh i didn't know that i didn't know that now we know we, we talk about it on here all the time lamar jackson he's breaking a, a new record like every other week but I, I did not know that that was that he broke another one he said the first uh is of course the 19 point comeback against the coast in 2021 alpha lamar jackson's one of the, one of one what a game that's NFL for you, my friend. This game gave me 10 heart attacks when watching it. Yeah, it was, it was crazy, like crazier than crazy. He said, I'm happy that we got the dub. I hit two of my three goals in the preview, and Alpha Lamar said, hold my beer, because he doubled my passing yards goal. Uh, we got the win. Alpha Lamar is the golden quarterback. I'm happy with him and the king. No shot on the Bengals. They bailed us out. Uh, I'm cool with Joe Cool. Hence, we got the win. I appreciate you as a Ravens creator. No, I appreciate that. He said, you the GOAT. I, I agree with a lot of stuff that you said in this email. That one, that's false, though. Uh, and then he said again, and, and with that, my friends, let's go Ravens, your boy Aaron. Appreciate you, Aaron. Next question came from my guy Vaughn. He said, don't trade Mark Andrews, but keep him. Put likely as a big body wide receiver for Lamar and keep Zay Bateman uh, and do all this when Aguilar leaves or retires. I don't think Mark is washed at all. I just think he wasn't fully back from the injury those first couple of games. We'll see. Because, hey, he was clutch. And that game against the Bengals, he came up clutch in the fourth quarter. So shout out to Mark Andrews, man, for being patient. He said that his time was going to come. And it certainly came in that game. Uh, he said, Tez Walker and likely as Lamar's big body wide receivers and Speedy Zay uh, and the one route runner and Bateman. Name a defense that can stop that. Uh, now, uh, with Tez Walker, the jury's still out. I mean, Ravens didn't believe in him enough for him to get playing time. Um, they didn't see enough from him in order for him to get playing time. So we'll see what happens with him in the future. Um, right now, it's not off to a good start, but it's not only about how you start but it's about how you finish as well uh he said uh Kolar and mark can hold it down and probably get another young tight end maybe a third string uh to try it maybe this year i think him and mark and Kolar should get in after the Bengals game you could even try this season but john won't go for none of that uh derrick henry is nothing but power and speed on the offense uh next year the offense should try this give me your thoughts this is a super bowl offense uh and i just thought about this because lamar loves big body wide receivers look what him and miles boykin did uh, in their short season they had together before Lamar's injury. Ah, I don't know. Uh, it wasn't the best connection between those two. Um, and he said, uh, look what they could possibly do for the playoffs and think about him and Hollywood, what he had at wide receiver with him. Now, with Hollywood, uh, that was one that really worked out um, a lot for Lamar Jackson. And yeah, um, for all of this, we'll see. We'll see. I, I know you're thinking more about the future with the Baltimore Ravens as far as their tight ends, wide receivers. But let's see how this year goes because this year still got a lot. We got a lot of this year left. And I, I think you're thinking like a GM will tell you. You're thinking about this year, but you're thinking about the future as well. But let's see how 2024 season goes, and then we'll get to 2025 when we get there. Next question came from my guy, Anthony. He said, what's up, man? Raven? Hope you and the fam are good. So with the Ravens' pass defense struggling, and if they continue to struggle, do you see the Ravens trading for a cornerback or safety or signing someone like Micah Hyde? As always, God bless and trust. No, I, I don't. I, I see the Ravens just sticking it out with the guys who they got. Um, and I, I think it would be one of those things where they would just really hope that making some adjustments, and even if you got to bench some players for a little bit or for a lot of it, if it comes down to it, they just that bad. 
they would have to be like really like really really consistently bad in order to get benched especially if they could get paid a lot of money but if that was the case then um that's the only thing i could say. i couldn't see them bringing in somebody bringing in a, a cornerback or bringing in a safety or something like that um i think they'll just roll with the guys who they got and just hope that they get better